Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the next session in this series. In the previous sessions, uh, we talked about the system memory map and also looked at a high level BIOS boot flow. So before we go any further and expand on each of the steps in the boot flow, let's talk about transaction flows in the system. Right? For example, say the processor um, makes a transaction to memory. Say it does a move instruction. Okay. So how does that move instruction, say a read or a write request to memory, how is this handled by the processor and the chipset hardware? Right? There should be some decoding and routing that should happen to guide the transaction from the processor to the right destination. Right? So let's, let's take, uh, for example, the um, a processor here. Right? The processor here is basically sending a transaction out. Okay? This, let's say I'm doing a move instruction. I'm moving um, to a memory location pointed to by, say, the EBX register. Right? Uh, value of 1, 2, 3, 4. And I am basically having uh, into EBX register, I'm moving, let's say, an address of, um, you know, I don't know, pick an address. So I'd say, um, you know, something like 8,000, okay? So 8,000, say. Okay, 8,000 hexadecimal and 1, 2, 3, 4 hexadecimal. So if you go look at the uh, memory map, what I'm saying here is, I'm going to write a value of 1, 2, 3, 4 to an address 8,000 hex in the memory. So that's all the processor does. So when the processor executes these instructions, it's going to move 8000 into EBX and then it's going to write 1, 2, 3, 4 into the address pointed by EBX. This is almost like a pointer in direction in C, right? So basically you get the um, address out, right? So that should be some decoding logic here, which is going to tell where this address should go to, where this transaction should go to. So this decoder will look at the address value and say, okay, go to memory, or let's say go to um, the IO devices. Okay, so go to uh, MMIO range here, or go to memory. Okay, this is a very simple decoding, but it's a little bit more complex when it comes to having me multiple memory controllers in the system, or multiple sockets, multiple processors, in a multiprocessor system, you have to tell this address or this transaction targeting this address where to go to. So if we go back to our initial diagram we had in the first video, right? So you can see that we have MMIO ranges here and we are having memory ranges here, so on and so forth. So by programming the decoder accordingly, we can specify a transaction to target memory or target an MMIO device, right? So basically, let's say the decoder, the BIOS programs the decoder, and it specifies which ranges should go into memory subsystem and which ranges should target the MMIO ranges or IO devices in the system. So I'm going to first go ahead and clarify some terminology here, right? So that the, we don't have any uh, confusions going forward. So I'm going to call the um, a CPU and a chipset, right? Uh, as two separate entities, okay? CPU or the core, okay? And chipset, can also be called as a system agent or could be called as a um, memory controller hub used to be called memory controller hub in uh, the FSP systems right so 
let's go ahead and call this a system agent, right? Just to be consistent. And here we're going to call it a CPU core. So these days, these two physically are within a socket or a processor package. So when you say processor, it is going to encompass both the CPU core and the system agent. Okay. So system agent is typically what that guides the transaction. Like we saw earlier, it has a decoding which guides the transaction to where it's supposed to go to. It also has memory controllers. It also has PCIe root ports. We'll talk about those things uh, in the in future sessions. Okay. So if you look at um, say we look at um, the system agent in particular. Okay. So I'm going to uh, draw a system agent here. And there are multiple CPU cores, right? Today's uh, processors are multi-core processors. Let's take an example of a four-core system. So there are four CPU cores in here. Okay. Four CPU cores. And we have a system agent. Now, as I said, functionally they are two different entities but these days the system agent and the cpu cores are within the same package within the same processor package okay so these two together encompass a processor but functionally you can think of them as two discrete components then what we have here is uh, we're going to have a memory controller. Okay, I'm going to call it a MC. And it is, this MC is going to uh, have memory behind it, obviously, right? So let's say we have a system agent with two memory controllers in here. Okay. We'll also have a bunch of PCIe root ports in here. And we'll talk about PCIe in, in depth in future sessions. So assume these are all PCIe devices. Okay. And then it also have, typically in uh, Intel platforms, another south bridge component here. We call it a PCH, right? It's called a PCH or Platform Controller Hub. Uh, it used to be called ICH, um, IO Controller Hub, right? So. Now, what the ICH does is basically has some I.O. devices in here. Uh, it also has, apart from the I.O. devices, it also has a path to the BIOS flash. Okay. So we are going to see how a transaction originating from the CPU core is going to go to the different parts of the subsystem. Okay. So just to reiterate, the CPU cores are functionally separate from the system agent. CPU cores basically execute instructions and if there is a request that needs to happen to the rest of the system, like for example, reading IO device or memory device, then the CPU will send a transaction to the system agent. Okay, So these CPUs here are sort of connected to the system agent. Okay. And the system agent will look at the transaction. It will identify this as a memory bound transaction or IO transaction and then route the transactions accordingly. Okay. So it will either go to the memory controller or can go to the PCIe devices as MMIO ranges or it can go down to the PCH and there are multiple IO devices in the PCH which can be the target for this transaction. Okay also going to basically have some clarification on the terminologies regarding the kind of transactions we talked about so we talked about memory transactions right and we talked about memory mapped io transactions also known as mm io transactions and io transactions okay so what does it mean is that a transaction when it comes out of the CPU core, 
the CPU core is going to go an indication to the system agent, whether it is a memory transaction or a I/O transaction. These are the only two classifications of transactions that the CPU core knows at a very basic level. So, if you are doing a move instruction, okay, then it will indicate to the system agent that it is a memory transaction or transaction targeting the memory address space, I should say. And if you are executing a in or a out transaction, right? So, you know, in um, x comma dl, whatever, right? So, if you are executing an in or an out instruction, then that transaction is basically an IO bound transaction. So, the processor will send an indication, sorry, the CPU core will send an indication to the system agent saying this transaction is targeting the IO address space. Okay, for completeness sake, I am going to briefly talk about a basic CPU, say an 886 CPU. You can skip the rest of the video if you'd like, uh, but this will just touch upon the basics very briefly. In the next video, we'll talk more about decoding at the system agent, uh, config transactions, positive decoding, subtractive decoding, interleaving schemes, etc. Okay. So let's talk about an 8086 CPU. Okay. In general, so here we have a 8086 CPU, and the main signals that I would like to focus on are basically three signals coming out of the CPU. One is called a read, active low. Next one is a write, active low. And you have an IO slash mem bar. So what it means is these three signals indicate to the rest of the system what it should do with the transaction coming out of the CPU. So we are going to have a bunch of buses, right? You're going to have an address bus, right? So we're going to have a 20-bit address bus, okay? Um, because 8086 CPUs target up to 1 MB, which is to power 20. And then we're going to have a 16-bit data bus, okay? So D0 to do D15. So when the CPU executes an instruction, it is going to put the address out and the data out. There are some more signals to coordinate it. There are the bits are sometimes multiplexed, so there is an ALE signal to um, which can be used to DMUX using a LS373. Let's not go go there, right? Basically, I like to focus on these three signals: read, write and IO slash memory bar. So when the CPU executes an IO instruction, okay, as I said, an in or an out instruction, then this signal will be one, okay, for IO. And if the CPU executes a move instruction, for example, then this will be zero, okay, for a move instruction. That's all there is to it. So the CPU is going to say whether you want to do a read or a write based on the two signals up there. And then it's going to say what instruction produced this transaction. Now it's up to the rest of the system to now guide the transaction and decode it and send it to the appropriate devices or agents. Okay. So typically what happens is this, um, when you see, when you, when you basically talk about a memory address space, right? You talk about a 20-bit address space. In this case, it is one megabyte. Okay. And when you talk about your IO address space, meaning the signal is high, then you're talking about something like a 4K address space in this process generation. So just four kilobytes of IO space, okay, uh, or 12 bits, 
I may be wrong, could be 64 kilobytes and 16 bits of I/O address space. But what I'm trying to say here is there are two different address spaces. Depending on what the signal I/O slash member indicates, the transaction targets the memory address space, and it or it could target the I/O address space. And within the memory address space, like we talked about in the very first video, when we look at the memory address space, the system agent then divides the address space into memory mapped I/O, MM config, or memory. Let's stop here for now and see you in the next video.